Um, walking into Barbara Simon's house was just one of the most amazing experiences. First of all, they had these little pillows all over the place with home sweet home on them. And there were also bottles, dozens of bottles and jars all over the house filled with colored water that her mother had made by putting a few drops of food coloring in these jars of water that were just glistening everywhere. It was an amazing spectacle. It was out of this world. Barbara was the first girl that I ever knew that was also my best friend. I was nine, and she, with many more years, or many much, much more experience, was 10. <laughs> and despite our age difference, we had a lot in common. Chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> television shows like Fury and the Boy Who Loved Him, and Leave It to Beaver, <laughs> and walking home together. And on this particular afternoon in 1959, we had stopped at my house for cookies and then continued to Barbara's magical house on top of Sageman Avenue in Brookline. And she invited me down to her game room, where we often played jacks and did homework. Now in this game room was a, an upright piano against the steps. And if you can picture an upright piano against the steps, you can also picture that sort of triangular space that might be created when you put a piano in front of the steps that was perfect for telling secrets. And that's where we told ours. So my secret that day was probably something very significant, like I had stolen my brother's yo-yo, something <laughs> significant. And Barbara whispered to me, I have a secret. And she leaned over, and instead of telling me a secret, she kissed me. Now this was not the kind of kiss that my mom gave me when I left for school. <laughs> this was one of those magical experiences like a butterfly landing on your hand. Now, this was my predicament. A Jewish boy from Brooklyn, from Brookline, <laughs> from Brookline, with a, with a shiksa behind a piano in her game room under the steps. <laughs> so many parts of my body began to stiffen. <clears throat> and I positioned my feet against the wall and turned towards Barbara, the physics of which, though hard to explain, caused the piano to move backwards since it was on casters. And also, the jars on the top of the piano, full of colored water, became unbalanced and fell towards the stairway where we were. The blue one on my head. <laughs> and then on the linoleum floor, and of course, broke into a hundred pieces, and the blue water all over Barbara's beautiful blonde hair. I don't remember really that much because I was unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came to, I really can't remember very much about this. Um, the, the hurt, certainly, in my head, which was probably temporary. I would soon forget that. And the hurt of, or the pain perhaps, of having to explain what we were doing behind the piano under those steps. But I can say that whatever happened on that afternoon behind the piano in Barbara's basement, the hurt of 
of love, it, it became actually our most magnificent secret. Thank you.